All right. Hopefully we're going live here. I'm doing this off of a Mac with a bunch of different stuff configured. So if you guys could just confirm that the audio is okay and you could even see me, that would be amazing. Can you see me and hear me? Is audio okay? Anybody? Anybody? All good? Sweet. Okay. All right, this has been a trip. Still trying to get my regular PC fixed. I'm on a Mac for the first time in my life, trying to learn how all this stuff works. It's insane. So I'm getting there. Whoa, chat's coming alive. All right, cool. So we know we're good there. Um, all right, so let's get started. I'll try and I'm going to, I'm very disorganized today. So you guys just have to be okay with that. Tomorrow will be a lot better, hopefully. But um lost about i'd say 160 165 uh, k today uh we started to get a rebound in the afternoon not everything's rebounding but but it looks like we're getting some elements back here let me just scroll down here so it looks like uh looks like tesla's still down 4.85 a lot of the miners are still hit pretty good uh but recovering cypher i think was down like i don't know 17 percent at one point so we're seeing some we're seeing some stuff get better there. Um, I took a lot of cash. So I'll show you that on the next screen. I have about $750,000 in cash. So I did that because I don't know. I just, I, I don't feel good about the economic data, the macro, what's going on between like you, Ukraine, Russia, China, the Middle East. It just seems like everything is kind of culminating at a time when indices are. Are, have, have done really well, I mean, for the last year plus. So let me just jump over here real quick. So I wanted to show you, um, I did buy a small amount of like Tesla, Cypher, Square. I might've even picked up a few other things. I don't know how many orders actually ended up closing, but you could see that I, I liquidated a bunch of stock. Uh, no options, but I liquidated a bunch of stock to gather cash. And this wasn't even all of it. Some of my other accounts uh, were liquidated too. The indices, let's go through this real quick because I want to kind of explain my thesis for why I took so much cash today. So let me just do this. And sorry, I'm still trying to get used to all these screens and just the layout. Even my main monitor, the visuals aren't quite right. So it's a little weird. But um, yeah, so the heat map shows a lot of red today. Meta still crushing it. Um, Tesla, not so much. Hor horrible earnings, or I should say delivery numbers, but that's okay. And um, again, just kind of a sea of red, but, but with some recovery later in the day, if we actually flip over to the heat map here and go to the one hour, um, you can see that things started to stabilize a little bit. Now the S and P, so we did, um, we did retrace back to the fib and test it. And we've wicked just a little bit above it. It's not super convincing yet though. And one of the big worries I have, not just with this indices, a number of them, is that we're overextended on, on the weekly. And if we go back a ways here and just look at, let me just zoom in here. Let's look just to the RSI, okay? Let's go back a ways. So if we look at the RSI and the S&P, we hit levels that really like, let's say the third time since 1997. So I don't love that. I'm not gonna lie, I don't love that. I don't love that we're we're hitting overextended levels that go back that far in time. And then if I zoom in on the monthly here, the monthly time frame, and like I draw this, you could see how we're how we're we're establishing a bearish divergence, a pretty strong bearish divergence on the RSI on the monthly time frame, which I also do not love. It just feels like the market is ripe. Some other people were saying this today, some commentators that I was briefly watching on CNBC. They were talking about how the market has has had a lot of good news just across the board. I mean, for a, for a long time, the the inflation data was coming in cool most of last year, or at least the latter half of last year. Um, and, and kind of early March, we haven't had any major contagion. Even the wars that are raging around the world have been pretty mild and calmed down over time. And uh, again, a lot of the economic data, it's a mixed bag of nuts, but it's a, it's a weird one as of late because we see weakness and we see strength. And then with oil, I should actually pull up oil here in a second. 
we see strength there too. And we see strength in the dollar. It's just, and, and gold's going up. So it's like, there's so many things that are conflicted and or pointing at, we could see a possible retracement in broader markets. And that's why straight up today, I was just sitting there thinking about it. I'm like, I should have cash. I should have at least 25% cash, maybe more. Um, I made over 700% last year. This year, eh, not so great in the red. But I want to hold on to some of those gains. And, and uh, if we have a retrace, I want to be able to capitalize off of it, which is why yesterday I sold, you know, 275000 in my hood uh, uh, calls. And then, and then today I liquidated more of my positions. And again, if I look at the Russell here, you can see how we've been hitting up against this. Um, looks like since uh, February on the fib and this is the golden retracement zone and we cannot stay above it we just can't get above it i don't love that either i didn't sell most of my clsk but i did sell probably 35 40 percent of it so and i sold it down today like four percent i think it's still closed down lower than that so not not too bad but anyway, so again, looking here, this is just the daily time frame, but you can see bearish divergence forming on, on, the, on the NASDAQ um, 102. If we go to weekly, again, you can see that divergence that's been building up for a while here where it's not getting as high as it was before. And I'm sure the monthly doesn't look any better here either. Nope. Again, it just kind of looks like it's hitting high levels. So this is this is some of the stuff that's scaring me. And, I, and again, um, and I just want to sleep well at night. For some of you guys, this is a uh, this doesn't matter as much for some of you. I won't say all, but you could DCA. You got jobs. You got good jobs. You could buy in. You could just keep DCAing if it goes down, and that's fine and dandy. This is actually how I DCA. Um, this is my income. I'm getting a little bit from YouTube now, but. This is how I make my money. So I have to think more cautiously than some. And I have to make sure that I have capital available to me because I've got to take care of myself, my family, and, and honestly, a bunch of other people. So, so, I, so I have to be a little more cautious. And just, again, like look at the S&P, look at the NASDAQ. I didn't sell the stuff that hadn't run yet, to be very clear. I haven't sold a dime of my PayPal leaps, even the 2025s. They're all still there. But I, I do have to think cautiously about the things that have done well. And when you're averaging five, six hundred percent off of hood calls, you take your profits. And the same thing with Square. I actually bought into Square today because it's getting more reasonable in price. But but you gotta you gotta be smart. You gotta take profits every once in a while. You gotta be ready for if something bad happens. And and uh, my worry is that we could have a temporary retrace even for a short period of time. And here's the way I look at it. Even if we don't have a major retrace, something I own will go down. It's inevitable. And I'll have an, an opportunity to buy into it. So that's what I'll do. That's my game plan. And that's why I'm sitting heavy in cash. I might only be in like 720 now or 730,000 in cash, but it's still a decent amount. All right. Fear and greed. We're actually seeing the lowest fear and greed. Hey, Tanner, what up, homie? Uh, we're seeing the lowest fear and greed readout since back in January, middle of January. So that's that's interesting. Um, I still don't think this is bad. And just observation. It doesn't look like you know anything crazy is happening. But if we switch over to neutral, it might be a sign that the broader market could be going down. He means me, his son. Yeah, you're my son. You're my bastard child, Tanner. <laughs> Um, all right, so let's jump into some economic data real quick. And sorry, I'm a little disheveled today. Again, I just got this working on my new MacBook. Um, so, and the screen resolution on my big screen isn't quite right. And I don't have my side view monitors up. I'm just a little distraught here. Um, so, but anyway, let's get into it. Economic data. So a couple of things. Redbook, Redbook for March look great. Look great. Yet again, um, this is a great read. So we're, we're popping up and that's what we want to see. It looks better probably like in the five or the three year, you can see that curve, but this, this is a good looking read. And again, this is like the, this is the biggest retailers in the nation. Um, and we want to see them doing well. Now, Joel, job openings, 
they came in lower than expected, which is great. We actually want, we want that, right? We don't want, we, the market right now wants to see inflation concerns diminishing. Wage inflation is one of the biggest ones. We've got two right now, two major ones, right? Energy costs and wages. Those are the big fears because that's what happened in the 70s. Um, both of those things exploded and you had unions all over the place that were picketing and demanding higher wages. And then you had oil, which was a flipping mess in the 70s. And you had people like queuing up, waiting to get it here in the States. So that's not happening. We have, I've showed, I showed you that the other day. Um, for anybody that watched uh, my last video over the weekend, when I was talking about Bitcoin going to 92,000, that didn't happen today. But when I was when I was talking to that video, I also referenced oil um, and just just what we've seen with that and how we're producing more than we ever have about how oil demand in, in the United States has at least been diminishing. And at the same time, our supply has been going up. And um, so we're still sitting pretty good now refined for gas and some of that stuff. We could still see some impact where it goes higher, but all said and done, it's not too bad. But yeah, again, so job openings, let's just look here real quick. So again, job openings continuing to decline. That's what we want. We want to get it more towards like a reasonable level. The 8,000 range wouldn't be bad at all. That would get us back to basically where we were. And when we were trending up before the pandemic, we were actually trending up anyway. So one could argue that we're kind of in line now. And that's good. We don't have to worry about that wage inflation. Now, uh, job quits. So again, a while ago, many moons ago during the pandemic, somebody could quit their job at Dairy Queen and go over to McDonald's and make an extra $5 an hour. That is not a thing anymore. So job quits are, are starting to pick up. We want to see that here. Let me actually go to here. So you can see that job quits started to pick up where <laughs> from really weak levels. And so this, again, will help as people not easily being able to rotate from job to job to job, demanding more and more money is a good thing for the economy. It helps create stability for businesses and it makes it to where, again, we don't have to worry about that wage inflation where people are just fighting to get talent. Um, and I don't think that's going to be a problem going forward. Now, factory orders, factory orders. So, again, the job openings and job quits. All that stuff look good. All that stuff look good. Numbers, numbers are going in the right direction. They're going down. Makes everybody feel like it's more likely that we'll be able to get see rates get reduced before things get bad with employment and that we'll have that soft landing. So people like to see that. But then it's like, okay, are we softening too much? <laughs> because factory orders, let's see here. Oh, I guess factory orders came in good. Let me look here. Hey, sorry, again, disheveled today. Ignore me. Let me read this real quick. So factory or new orders for U.S. manufactured goods rose by 1.44% from the previous month, trimming the upwardly revised 3.8% drop in January and above market expectations of 1%. Cool. So this is good. So this is actually great. So we've got slowing wage inflation, and then we've got factory orders that actually look like they're trending in the right direction, which is up. Even with transportation being removed from it, um, we're seeing 1.1%. So that's that's good, actually. So today's data, all in all, was pretty decent. But it's conflicted, right? Because some of it looks like the economy is doing really well, factory orders and the Red Book. And the other parts, like the jobs, look like they're slowing down. And the jobs is the scary part. Because if, if unemployment starts to go up a lot, that's usually a bad sign that we've crossed a chasm that we didn't want to cross. But so far, looking okay in here. I do want to do something, though. I want to pull up oil, and I want to look at the dollar, just because I haven't even spent the last three hours trying to get this shit set up. And so <laughs> I, haven't even been, I haven't even looked at this in a while. Um, all right, so let's get in here. Oil like crude. And I don't love that. So remember how I talked about how we needed to break down here, have a bear flag, essentially? Well, we're rolling up, and we're going into resistance, and we're almost, I mean, I could move this just a little bit, which means it might still reject because we got a little bit of real estate there, but uh, that's probably it. So if it goes up again tomorrow, then we're in a breakout on oil. And that is not great because again, the, we want rates to come down in June. We don't want the Fed worried about inflation. That's just two things that we don't want to have happen. We want to be able to open up markets and 
get it to where the banks are lending again and get it to where rates are dropping so the real estate market and auto sectors are doing better. We don't want fears of inflation getting out of control because of some escalations in the Middle East or China or whatever. Um, so that kind of sucks. We want to see we want to see commodity and the energy space subside. And I still think that might happen. It's just, I don't know how quickly that narrative changes. Now the dollar hit up against the 100 moving average on the weekly and it stopped there. So I think it did. Let's see if we can zoom in. I got a, it's a little different on a Mac. Nope, it's actually above it. That sucks ass. So we'll see if this goes up tomorrow too. So if we have the dollar climbing tomorrow and oil climbing tomorrow i don't think equities will do well so hopefully and but i mean again so i've got a bunch of cash so that's probably not the end of the world for me but that's not super ideal for the markets it means we could you know ha have a have a breakdown there but still this almost looks like it could be a bear flag or a bearish pennant almost so it looks like this could still roll over so we'll see what happens all right and let's just take a look at commodities here real quick too I haven't been looking at these much lately, but I feel like I need to. And sorry, I'll try and get in the comments. I'm just, it's weird today, the setup and the the visual imagery on my main monitor isn't super great. So it makes it kind of hard to read and focus. Um, so again, you could see, you could see for, for most of 2023, especially the first half, I was showing people how all of the prices were coming down. Everything was turning red and it was all getting better in the commodity space. But look at the last month. It hasn't been super great. Now, uranium retraced a little bit, but again, it's heading up again now on the weekly. And natural gas is still down. Um, but crude oil, ethanol, gasoline, these are all creeping higher. And that is not great. Gasoline is, we don't want this to go up. This is a base expense for everybody, for like anybody who's selling a widget, for even services, you know, they've got to have things shipped to them. We don't want to see gas go up because it just adds extra expense, which takes away from company margins. Um, we don't want to see this. So hopefully we can see some stabilization here soon and we can see it roll back over. Now, I did want to talk too to the Fed watch tool and just how we're sitting after today's economic data. We do have, well, let me see here. Let me go to June. One second. Uh, we do have still a 63-ish almost percent chance. 62.5, uh, I think, percent chance of rate cuts in June still. So that's good. So we're still about a two to one ratio. Didn't change too much today. Um, that's good. That's what we want to see. Oh, I don't touch, uh, Matt, I don't touch commodities. I really don't love them. So I don't have much to say on that front in regard to like puts, leaps or any of that stuff. Now, I did want to touch, I'm going to roll through a few things here real quick. And then we'll look at some of my more common charts. Again, I'm missing a bunch of monitors, so bear with me. I did want to touch on this, though, from the Bitcoin side of things. Uh, James posted this. He said, Mr. 100 just went up, uh, went big on this dip, scooped up 1,256 BTC. So we don't know who this wallet is. We know they were buying about 100 Bitcoin a day, and then they started ramping up even more. And now on this dip, they basically bought 1.3 days of supply whoever this wallet is, but they, they, they're ramping up. They're getting more aggressive heading, heading into the halving, which is less than three weeks from today. So that's interesting to note. Also Tesla delivery numbers, horrible, way below expectations. I just uh, drove around today and Tesla full self-driving 12.3.3. It doesn't fucking matter guys. That thing did. It's like, it's like a person is driving my car now. I can't tell you how good it is at what it's doing. It even drove out of my fucking driveway, which it's never done before. It literally drove out of my driveway onto the street, went to where I wanted to go, and then brought us back. The only intervention I had was that it was going to pull in the exit of the car wash that I was going to. So I had to disengage it so I could go through the car wash. But I think eventually it's going to figure that shit out too. Outside of that, it literally drove me all across town for like a half an hour. It did everything and it did it so well. It was freakish. Every time I thought like, oh, I should be getting over in the other lane right now, it would do it. So I just, 
yeah, it's it's there's a reason they're pushing this now. There's a reason they didn't give a shit about trying to push out a bunch of deliveries at the at the end of the quarter like they've done for so many years. They don't fucking care. They know what they have here. Um, also, looking at the energy deployed, these numbers are strong when you consider how high rates are right now. We're still looking at large deployments of energy, and I, I can see this progressing. Not even just that. My friend James Stevens here, uh, Stevenson, he, he posted something nice. It says to zoom out. Sorry, I got to get used to this. It says to zoom out and look at the growth story behind Tesla. Like, yeah, sure, they, they had one quarter that sucked. One traditionally horrible quarter for the auto, auto industry. And the other guys are really getting fucked. BYD, let me see if I can find it here. BYD, BYD hands back top EV seller title to Tesla after Q1 sales decline. They did worse. They did worse. They did worse. So I'm sorry, like, say what you may, but it's not that big of a deal what's happening right now. I also wanted to point out to this. So look at uh, look at China, China insured numbers for March. So we're starting to see a pickup there too. Look at this, 17,300 insured vehicles, um, way above, you know, these previous numbers for January and February. So we're starting to get back in the groove again in China, even though I do believe that market is going to be incredibly difficult. I'm not optimistic about it. You probably know this about me. But again, I we're going to jump into some other screens here too. I apologize for not having all of my other screens up and up and ready. But um, we're going to look at a few more stocks and then I'll get into your guys' requests. And I'm trying to look at comments here and see what's going on. You block people that you don't agree with. I do. Hey, uh, Chris, can you get rid of this able guy and tell him to fuck off? Can you get rid of that guy? Thank you. Or you know what? I could do it too. Let me see. I'll get rid of you right now. So let's see. Bye, Abel. You have a good day. Boo, 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 boo. Hide user from channel. Fuck you. All right, here we go. Let's get in here. All right. So let's uh, let's just roll through things here. PayPal. Yeah, sorry, man. Some people just piss me off. I don't even know what that was about. If if I blocked him inadvertently, he could say something a little nicer about it. And uh and I would I would fix that. I have bad days sometimes. When you when you put yourself on social media, you have everyday people that shit on you. Every day, no matter what. You could be doing everything right. You could have a wonderful day. You could make a bunch of money and people will shit talk you. And uh I don't take lightly to it at all. I get really annoyed by it. People that are courteous, I will give them my DM and we'll take care of stuff. I, I will I will help answer questions. I will I will bend over backwards for people who are kind and courteous. But people that are assholes can fuck off. All right, that's done. PayPal. PayPal actually did pretty good today. I mean, it did pretty good, right? Like down 0.57%. Um, I think I might have bought some of this today. And then uh, looking at look at this volume here. Yeah, in real life too. But people are worse online. They're worse. Because online, they don't have to be accountable. They don't even have to have a fucking image associated with who they are. So they can just be assholes to anybody they want to. And there's definitely a certain group of people that like to be that way. Yeah, exactly, Rex. He knows it. Um, but yeah, so there's just people that want to be dicks and I, I don't take lightly to that at all, but yeah, so looking at PayPal, I'm loving that we're still above this massive volume shelf. I think that's beautiful, man. I think it's beautiful and, uh, it's exciting to see. And the fact that it did so well today, I think worst case, I don't even think it dropped 2% today at the worst. Um, so I was happy to pick up some January, 2026 calls on this one. Because I think again, I think I think we're going higher. Let's see how SoFi did. All right, SoFi looks like we're just testing this support, this box, and this downward line that I've drawn so many times already. Um, testing it again. Didn't do bad though. Again, 0.28 percent. Nice recovery later in the day. Uh, I don't know. I might have to start buying more of this. I've been a little reluctant to get too excited about the fintech space, or I shouldn't say this, 
not fintech fintech yes paypal some of these others but specifically the banking sector of fintech just because of the fact that when you give out loans you take on a much greater liabilities and again paypal does that too buy now pay later um and so if i has really high end credit but i've just been i've been wanting to give this one time to peter out and the january 2026 calls i haven't gotten interested in them yet so i'm hoping time works on my side to where i'll i'll these will start looking better and they'll start looking like they have a richer multiple to them and that will be enticing enough to make me buy them um, I don't want to buy more 2025. I want to extend that risk out. I don't want to deal with it over the shorter term. I'm doing that with everything. Um, I might, might if Tesla drops a bunch, which I don't think it's going to because FST is just like, it is a chat GPT moment if you don't know that. Um, disabled, you guys are hilarious. But uh, but I hope it goes down because I only have $300,000 in calls and I want a bunch more. All right, let's pull up some more stuff here. Let's look at Palantir. How'd you do Palantir? Did you did you did you bounce today? Eh, hey, you even got a bounce too, man. I can't talk too much shit about Palantir today. That's not bad. We need to get above this line again. This this previous upward trending resistance that was briefly support. We need to get back above it. If it does that, it could be game on again. But if we can't and we continue to reject off here, same with Bitcoin, same with all these indices. Um, we're at a pivot, pivotal point. We need to get higher again, or we're going to get lower. And it looks like the same thing here. But I like the bounce. Again, this thing was down like 3 4% today. So seeing it recover like it did is pretty pretty awesome. Definitely some people love their, their Palantir. And I don't blame them. It's a good company. All right, Square. So I bought a little bit of this today. The, the, the leaps on it were down like 16% or something. So I just had, I had to bite the bullet. I need to get my scroll working better. This is annoying. But... You can see here, we've got our previous resistance line. Uh, we need to turn it to support. So Square needs to bounce. It needs to get up to like 81 and do it in fairly short order. Um, I don't see a lot of, on the weekly, it doesn't look crazy as far as like divergence or anything like that. Let me look at the daily. Daily, it kind of does. Going back to December, December, you can see where price go up, RSI go down. Same with MACD. So that's not great. Um, so there could be, there could be some more pull into this, maybe into this little block, or maybe, I don't know, we'll see how bad things get. Again, everything everything right now is just sitting on the precipice of, of resistance and support. Thanks, nobody, or nobody, nobody, nobody. Thanks, man. Thank you for joining. All right, so let's look. Uh, I want to pull up RG here real quick. I want to see how that did too. And then we'll look at miners because um, I want to see. I know some of them started to recover. All right. <laughs> Archie, Archie got its ass handed to do it. I actually bought more of this today too, just because I like the setup for it. And um, the multiple on the return, especially on the 2026s, is still pretty tight. And if we go risk on again, I think that this is going to be one of the main benefactors because um, people want genomics exposure if we go risk on again. And this is going to be a great, great way to get that for most people because most people don't want to research, you know, 30 different genetic companies and bioscience companies to try and figure out which two of them are actually going to make any money. Hey, I got a new mug. How regal is that, huh? All right. So yeah, this got its ass handed to do it. I bought, I don't know, I might've closed a couple more um, uh, trades that I had sitting in there queued up. I didn't get a chance to look at any of that. I literally was configuring all this stuff right until the last minute. So who knows? But I do like, like if you look over here, you can see how we had a brief moment where we broke out from what was resistance going back through here, fell right through it again, broke above it again, turned it into support briefly, and then just couldn't break past this fault, that peak volume up here. And now we're going back down. So there's a real good chance that we start to find some support down here. And that is what I'm hoping for. And I'm hoping the options contracts just bleed out because it's awesome when you can put a little bit of money in there and get, you know, five, six, eight X multiplier or more off your returns of the underlying asset. All right, let's look at, uh, let's do the other stuff. Let's look at MicroStrategy and then we'll get into the miners. All right. Do, do, do. I got too many of these things. I just need to get them off my screen. It's giving me a headache. 
All right. So MicroStrategy down 3.54%. Again, nice bounce at the end of the day. Got a decent wick here. Oh, I need to fix the scroll. Got a decent wick here, but again, just a lot of chop. We'll see which way we end up going. Um, could be bullish to the upside, though. And I sold some today. So if that happens, that sucks for me, not for you guys. Um, but yeah, so, it, but here's the thing I don't like on MicroStrategy. I'm just going to throw this out here real quick. So our RSI level is the second highest. Yeah, second highest since 2009 on the weekly. Second highest since 2009. And don't get me wrong, if Bitcoin goes higher, this thing can go with it. But there's also wicked short interest on this thing. So if markets roll over, you got to remember this thing's almost 2x its underlying assets. So over short terms, I mean, MicroStrategy is going to be hella volatile. Hella volatile. Uh, TBH, I like every single one of your picks except ArcG. Can't trust Kathy. Kathy's not a good trader, but she's brilliant at seeing the future. And um, you just have to realize what a lot of her funds are for. And again, some of them suck. Some of them have shitty stuff like Roku. What the fuck is that? Teladoc, obviously too early. But a lot of these companies as, and in the genomic sector too, this is VC. She's giving you access to venture capital. 90%, 95% of VC fail. So all she's doing is giving you an opportunity to have the success. But yeah, there's going to be failure in it. And during times of exuberance, they'll really perform well, despite the underlying fundamentals. And times where people are pulling back, they're not going to do well. So like you just got to know with this fund, it's an asymmetric bet. And I could get, I mean, I can get, I could do 20x. If, if, they're, if the stock price for them doubled, I could do 10 to 15. So that's what I'm about. I'm about asymmetric opportunities. And uh, Kathy, again, she's brilliant, though. You got you got to give her credit, guys. Like, just because a lot of people bought in at the highs when everybody was talking about Kathy Wood being brilliant, and I have a shirt with her picture on it. I bought one right around that time. Still wear it every once in a while. Not in public, though, because people get really pissed about Kathy Wood. But a lot of people bought into that shit, right? Like, a lot of people bought into it at the absolute tippity top, and they got fucked. But you got to realize this lady was talking about NVIDIA way before other people were. She was talking about Tesla way before other fucking people were. When I was talking about Tesla and people were looking at me like I was crazy in 2018 and 19, before it went up like 30x plus, she was talking about Bitcoin way before everybody else. So she's not great at stock picking, I wouldn't say, but that ARC, ARC is good at looking way into the future and trying to figure out what is coming. And so that that's where the specialty lies. And as long as you know you're getting involved with a venture capital fund and a lot of the stuff's going to fail and you're hoping for a few to exceed, succeed, then you're going to be fine. Again, there's a reason there's like 40 or 50 fucking listings in ARC Genomics. It's not because they're all going to win. All right, there's a rant. A lot of rants today. All right, Kathy or Pelosi? <laughs> Follow Pelosi. She does do well. She's a better trader, probably. You got that. All right. Let me see here. What else we got? We need to get uh, Clean Spark. Let's see how CLSK did today. And you know what? I might actually, before I pull all that up, I might take a broader view here. Uh, how do I do that? How do I do my portfolio thing? Uh, I got to see if I can find this, guys. One sec. Oh, there it is. There it is. So if I go here and then I go here. No, is that the right one? No, that's not the right one. Let me go back here here no that's not it go to here sorry i'm trying to figure out how to do all this stuff on my back okay there we go all right sweet so hut eight who took it in the ass hut eight did cypher still not doing super good either hut eight probably deserves it cypher probably doesn't which is why i bought some of this down 17 18 percent on the day clean spark down 9.42 so still I'm, I'm like doing four or 5% better from exiting that trade um, earlier today. And then I read everything, everything took a hit today. I mean, look, MicroStrategy actually did the best. Again, people might not agree with this, but miners are a multiple of uh, that's greater than MicroStrategy for, for returns and losses. And that'll be proved, proved in the future. Um, let's see what, what are we looking at for the, 
So what are we looking at for the three month on these miners here? Oh, I don't have them all listed. Pew, 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 pew. All right, you're getting a little bit of noise with this, so I can. Let me see here. All right. So the three month micro strategy is still vastly outperforming. None of the miners doing better than Bitcoin. That's the way it works sometimes, though. All right. The monthly cipher is outperforming. Micro strategy second, wolf third. So again, you could just see these things are going to take turns rotating. And then if we go out a year, Clean Spark is kicking all their asses. So, I mean, these take turns, right? That's the way this works. Now let's pull up Clean Spark. Start there. And that's why people can trade between them. But man, I don't, I don't know. I don't care. I don't like short term capital. Oh, this I don't love. So remember all we were talking before. We were hoping, we're hoping that it gets stays above this fib and that it stays above this line. So tomorrow we want to see it get up to like the $17, $18 range so that these turn into support again. Because this is our first real major back test, right? We broke above the, the, the FIB, the dot 618 golden retracement zone. This is where we're most likely to go lower. And um, we, we fell back down. And then we got stuck under it. And then we tried to go above. And then we fell back down. And then we went above it. And then we fell back down. And then we got stuck under it. And then we went back up. And now we fell back down. And so we need to actually turn it into support quickly. That's when you have a good sign that you're not going to go a lot further. But again, the reason I exited like 40% of my position on Clean Spark is because of the fear of what could come. Doesn't have to. But if you look at the volume gap here, it's huge. And if we get down to the 50, this is as double, triple toppy as you can get for a pattern. And it would suck. So. It means that we're probably going down here to the, the 11s. And when I had the choice today of, you know, getting out in the 17s or potentially going down to 11, I took it. I took it because, again, I'm I'm, I'm somebody who uses this as income too, not just long term investments. And I kind of have the liberty to do that when you have larger amounts of money. They say, like, when you get past 100,000, it's easier to make money, especially if you don't live off of it. And uh, it's true because the larger amounts you have, like I've got $2 billion still invested. So is it the end of the world if I, if I took 750 out? Probably not. All right. So anyway, so we need to get back above and you can see what happens if we don't. We got this gap over here. It could get nasty, right? So hopefully that doesn't happen for the people that are in it. Let's look up Cypher. I'm liking Cypher. I'm liking the setup on this one, guys. All right, I'm going to get these charts all set up better. Oh, so annoying. So annoying having to configure everything again. You get it all set up right, and then your shit don't work. All right, so you can't totally see it here, but it came back real darn close to the bib and bounced up. That's good, because again, look over here. We're above all peak volumes, and the great thing about Cypher that it's got going for it is it has not done well, and that is a bonus right about now, right? And I can't even say it hasn't done well because it has, but it's a small cap. It's a really small cap, right? So since January 2023, it's up 1,100%. So you can't say it hasn't done well. But again, if you look at this more like where has it been for the for the average here of going back to May of 2023, it hasn't done well. So it front-loaded all of its success, right? Because if I look over here, it's really like barely doubled since May of 2023, 11 months ago. So that that sucks, right? No, 2 billion would be cool. 2 million, 2 million. <laughs> I would love 2 billion. Give me that 2 bill. I do plan on being a billionaire someday. So we'll see how that works out. But yeah, so I love this. I love this look. I love the fact that for the first time, you see over here again, this is the weekly. If you looked at the daily, it would look a little better. But you can see how we've never turned this into support. We just always went right underneath of it. So if we can actually turn this into support again, kick ass. That'll be wonderful. Oh, uh, probably pull up Mara here. A lot of people like Mara. All right. So Mara. Mara's probably going to be fine too. Just because, well, I mean, it doesn't have to be, but... 
again, we got the 50 and the 100 over here, and the 100 should be good base. It hasn't started curling up yet, and that's on the monthly. Let me go to the weekly. That's probably better. So you got the 200 moving average here. If it can find support again under that, that's good. It also has the 50 trying to push it up. It's got the 100 starting to curl around. So it's got a lot of like moving average level support here um, for it to grind up against. Plus, it's got this like inverse head and shoulders that looks like it's just a back test before going higher. So I would actually ar argue that Mara probably won't go much lower. It's 5.58 billion. It could though. I mean, if it can't keep this support in like the 17 range and we break underneath the 200 moving average on the weekly for any period of time, like let's say a week, then it's probably going to suck. Then we'll probably roll down into like the 14 range, maybe even test down here into like the 12s. But Bitcoin will have to take a shit for that to happen. Um, if it doesn't, Mara's probably near a bottom. All right, let me see. I'm going to move over. Uh, Lou, welcome back. Thank you. It's nice to be back, man. I missed it. Uh, what a lovely BTFD. Buy the fucking dip. Yes, sir. Lots of that today. Sean 919. Hey, Jesse. Would you please take a look at PUBM? I will, sir. If there's anything else I missed, let me know, guys. But we're going to move on here. I don't actually think I have PUBM. So let me add that. So weird, too. My uh, my PC has just so much fan noise. And my Mac has absolutely none. So I feel like I'm sitting in like a quiet room by myself, talking to myself. So it's, it's a little... A little confusing. All right. Pubmatic. Pubmatic. That's a weird name. Already starting to take off. Uh, getting pretty high on the weekly. Highest it's ever had. Uh, what's going on with this company? Who are they? P-U-B-M. It's so quiet in here. Super weird. Got to get a noisemaker. All right, 14% year-over-year growth. Let's see, revenue's going up. Decent clip. Uh, again, it started this, it looks like it's maybe slowed down. You can see that last year, how it's just not, wait, ooh, net income. That's interesting. Um, huh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to adjust this. Real quick. I don't know how on a Mac to easily resize my window. I got to figure that out. Control minus does not seem to do it. So that's fun. Uh, lots of cash. Not a lot of debt. Operating expenses pretty blah. Cash flow is going up though. Love that. Bit farms. Yeah, I can do that one in a sec too. I'll hit that next right after this and then I'll go back to my list. Not a lot of short interest. Decent amount of institutional. Let's look at what our forward guidance looks like in here. It's not super great. Insider activity. They're buying back. Short interest has started to tick up again. I don't know. What 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 were the actual revenues here? Uh 1.2 billion market cap. Revenue 84 million. Only 18 million coming in. Super rich PE ratio. Yeah, I don't know. What do these guys do? I think uh I think my boy, did he put it in here? Related about info. My boy, Alejandro. Telling me what people are doing. Pubmatic is a leading sell-side platform that enhances revenue for publishers and app developers through digital advertising monetization while also helping advertisers achieve higher returns on investment by targeting audiences in safe premium environments. That's a lot of fucking word salad. That's a lot of word salad. So uh, I don't know, Sean, if you could tell me more about the company. Uh, that's kind of their or describer or description, and I don't know what it means. Um, earnings May 7th, but again, it, it kind of feels like we're flattening out with these guys and guidance isn't going up a lot, and it's run pretty good from the bottom, 10.83 to 24, so that's a pretty good bounce. Um, arguably fairly valued unless we see Something crazy. I mean, again, they're doing beats here, which is nice. The market always likes to see a beat. But when you look at the actual fundamentals, um, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of growth here. And it's not like they're making that much money. So I just don't, I don't know how interesting this one is. I will save it though. 
All right, what else we got? Uh, Henry, Jesse, missed you, bro. You too, my friend. DeFi activated, AEHR, possible for asymmetrical gains, opportunity, stock uh, beat up, financials seem to have turned for better in 2022 and 2023. P.S., you're the best, and thanks for all you do. Thank you, DeFi. All right, let's take a look. I feel like I might have looked at this one. Is that right? A, uh, no, that's a different one. Or I, oh, man, I'm dyslexic. I named it wrong. Let me fix this real quick. So I knew I'd looked looked at this. Uh, what was it? A E H R. All right. So electronic technology starting to come back. 342 million. How often did they hit their earnings? Yeah, pretty decent lately. Uh, November 2022. Let me see here real quick. I'm going to draw some lines. What is this? Uh, 2011. I will, for $10, I will do that, Siraj. You got me, homie. I will do it. $10 is a lot of money for a request. All right, so I'm going to draw it from here. Yeah, I probably owe you guys some time, too, because it's been a while since I did a video. All right, let's see here. So I'm going to say this to this because this was kind of our next major, assuming that we have bottomed. And if we haven't, then none of this holds true. Isn't that amazing? Again, astrology, right? Astrology for men. And yet we perfectly retraced off the golden retracement zone, the dot six one eight Fibonacci. So like, it's just funny to me how these patterns repeat for something that isn't supposed to be real. I think people should understand Fibonacci better and how it exists everywhere. Hey, is audio still sounding good too? Is everything good? All right. So let me see here. We're going to look at the company. Is audio better for the people that have been complaining about audio? Is it better today on my Mac? Anybody see it better? Audio sounds mint. Kick ass. All right. Sweet. Cool. All right. So if I can just get my screen looking better here and get a few more spun up, I got this dock. Hopefully that'll work. Ooh, this is interesting. 45% increases. It is a two, $343 million company. Um, pulling in 6 million net, 21 million revenue. So not huge numbers right now. What is the estimate? Oh yeah. That's why I didn't like it. This one probably fell off my radar for this reason. Just forward guidance looks like shit. If, if this was still trending up, like if even if we had a seasonal thing, that would be cool. But it's like, oh, and in Q2, we're going to go negative on EPS again. That kind of sucks. Um, institutional ownership has climbed. But again, these guys have been selling, not buying. And there's 20% short interest. Yeah, I can't like A A H E R, bud. I can't. Yeah, I can't get me to like it. You're not going to beg me. All right, uh, Henry, would you please take a look at I I N M D? Is that I N M D or is that? Let me see. I N. Yes, I believe it is. I got two of them. We're gonna delete one because you don't need to. All right, let's take a look here. In mode. All right, I need to reacquaint myself with this one. Oh, I got to save these charts. I got to get my scroll doing better. Just a second here. We're going to do something real quick. Scrolling speed. Fast. All right, fuck that shit. Is that better? That's better. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah we like that. It's amazing how many things you don't realize that you don't have <laughs> when you switch to a completely different ecosystem. Again, I don't even know how to like quickly resize my windows. It don't work. You're gonna have to Google that. All right. So these guys are valued at a $1.7 billion business. Medical devices. Uh, in mode, creative medical devices focusing on devices that use novel radio frequency for a range of surgical and aesthetic procedures. Their products span all right, cool. Dermatology, gynecology, fun. Plastic surgery. Wow, these guys are everywhere. 
They're up in your JJ and they're fixing your face all at the same time. All right, let's take a look. Estimates. Kind of flat. Not great there. No insider activity or it's not populating. Oh, thank you, H. I'm going to like that one here. Thank you very much. I'll make sure to do that before we go. Institutional ownership, flat, short interest is in the sixes. So it's, it's the short interest started to drop. Maybe things got a little better. Their cash position is really good. Not a lot of dilution, decent cash flow. I mean, this isn't a bad company. Revenue growth, 45% year over year is nice. If we look at the yearly, it's not too bad. But it looks like it's slowing down a little bit. So the question is why? That said, I do like this one. I need to, is there a notepad on this fucking thing? Here we go. How do I do this? <laughs> one second, I'm trying to find a notepad. I got a digital one here, a Mac notepad. How do I type in my note? There it is. Oh, hey, cool. Oh, this is gonna be fucking handy. All right, INMD. All right, so I've added this to my, I will call it something later. But this is interesting from a long perspective just because it's still really depressed and it doesn't look like there's a catalyst to go higher. I don't know if it's great right now because it's a $1.75 billion valuation. But if things start to look up and this trades down a little bit still, um, this might be interesting. So I'm going to look at it as a long uh decent chart needs more uh, better forecast better forecast okay we'll save that now all right who's up next who's up next all right uh, blah, 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 blah. henry i couldn't help but buy clsk 2026 leaps uh, just remember that the cycle will be over in 2026, so those will probably never pay out. I am very, very hesitant of touching those kind of leaps. You'd be going beyond what we've seen for peaks. Normally, it's between like September, December where we peak, and so you'd be beyond that. So I just worry about holding those for so long. I really do. Uh, the stock I suggested last time there in medical devices field, the company is suffering for two reasons, rates and Israeli-Palestine war. Okay, cool. That's helpful. I think I remember that from before. Thanks, Casper. All right. Um, all right, let's go down here. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I couldn't help but to buy. Okay, I already read that. Is this live? Yes, it is. Uh, happy having every month, everybody. Yes. Yeah, we're going to have to do something for the having. I got to see. Maybe a mid or somebody else will want, want to want to participate. Maybe Tanner, or Rex, somebody. We got to we got to do a live stream. We got to do something for the having event, man. Uh, all right. Um, some problems with the new setup. Maybe hope you had a great Easter weekend. I did. Bought CLSK at twenty three. Cool. Hope it does well. Okay. Everybody talking about my audio. Let's scroll past that. Can okay. Can see it here. Bought MicroStrategy at eighteen hundred. Nice buy. Hopefully it don't drop further. Uh, did have a nice wick up. Why go with Tesla June 2026 calls instead of December 2026? December 2026, so the further out you go, you're paying more of a premium that can depreciate over time, right? Um, so I might be interested in that, but they're a little rich right now, and so they're not giving me the multiple of return that I want to have. And I still think June is plenty of time. Um, giving two plus years for Tesla to start to get to $330, I think is plenty of time. So that's why. Um, but again, run, run the options cal calculator yourself for both and see see if you like the multiple for that extra six months you're buying. Did I talk about Matterport? Oh, I didn't. Yeah, no, I should do that. And I didn't talk about BITF. So let me do that real quick too. So I'm going to do Bit Farms and then I'll do Matterport. I'll probably do DLO. You know what? Let me do Matter first and then I'll get back to that. Oh, uh, Matterport. So Matterport, I think the I saw the option. So I sold out of all my stock for this one earlier just because I, I wanted cash. So I took it. I kept all my calls and I saw them dropping today and I'm probably going to buy them. So this one dropped 6%. So the stock got hit pretty good today. Um, and I am I have orders in um, on the calls. I can't remember if it was 36 for the contract or 30 cents for the contracts, something like that. But I've got orders that are out there. 
Um, and if we if we continue to see a retrace, I'm buying more Matterport and I'm buying more DLO for the calls because I sold the stock on both of those today. Um, right now, I mean, we're above peak, beneath peak volumes. So like this thing could drop further. We rejected off the 100. We didn't stay above the 50 on the on the daily time frame. Let's look at the weekly here. Uh, didn't even make it up to any of the, uh, this just isn't old enough. So we didn't even make it up to any of the moving averages yet. So again, we're probably just going to meander around here and here for a while. Um, and we'll see what happens, but I am buying, my intent is to buy more. I'm actually hoping it drops a bunch because I love it when I find things that I'm interested in, especially with these guys having the narrative of if rates get better in June, or even if it's July, we're getting a rate cut in June or July. I'm sorry. I just, ugh. We're getting it. I know it. I feel it in my bones. All right. So DLO actually fared better, only down 2.25%. And this had a little bounce yesterday too. I like the fact that it's above the peak volumes here. All the major peak volumes, except for like up here, really love to see it get above 1670. Then, then it's like, okay, we're rocking and rolling if we can start trading in that range. But I'm hoping this one drops more, but it doesn't look like it's going to yet. All right, so let me uh, let me pull up BITF because I know somebody asked for it, and I told them I'd look it up. And then I just moved on. All right, BITF. This is kind of a good pattern. You like to see this where it's kind of trending down like this. It means it's springing, and it might want to go higher. So I don't hate that. And BITF, the thing it's got going for it, I wouldn't I wouldn't own options on BITF. Okay, I I don't feel comfortable with options on, on Bit Farms. Uh, I, I worry that they're an acquisition candidate. Same with Cypher, these small caps. Here's the deal. This is important. You need to listen to this. For Bitcoin miners that are small, that don't have big stacks, don't buy options. You know why I say that? Because if they get acquired, your options might never get in range and you just fucking lose everything. Plus, they're small caps. You're going to get a multiplier on the return. So if Bitfarms Bit does well, their market cap is $658 million. To put it in perspective, Mara is nine times their size. So it takes a lot less money for this thing to pump. Okay? A lot less. And especially compared to MicroStrategy, which is like $30 billion-ish, whatever. Like, it takes a lot less money for this thing to pump. So don't do options on the small miners, guys. You're going to fuck yourself, especially if you're going out past like January 2026 or beyond. You're going to screw yourself because not only will you be past the peak and people that are smart are going to know that the chance of it be, being high at that time is very low and they won't buy them. So you'll have less liquidity as we get closer to that date because people are going to wise up because they're going to listen to people like me and they're going to go, fuck that. Why would I buy those? So you're going to have less liquidity over time. And if you get these small ones, they're acquisition candidates. And I think CleanSpark and maybe even Mara will be buying some of these fucking companies. So just like, just keep that in mind. And again, maybe it isn't them. Maybe it's smaller privatized miners. Maybe it's some of the others that literally have no stacks and have like, I don't know, like, I don't want to talk shit, but like HUD-8, horribly run companies that are going in 20 directions, HUD-8. But um, th those could be acquisition candidates before they fail. <laughs> Not that they're going to probably anyway. All right, let's see here. So, um, all right. So we got the bit farms. We got this other stuff. Where was I on my list? Let me get down. I'm just going to chug it down on my list. I'm going to look over at comments here. Uh, more requests. Sorry if you already spoke about it. Uh, not your mom. Love the name. I don't understand where you flip flop in is coming from a week ago. See let's get, well, man, you should fucking pay attention. <laughs> And if you talk to me that way again, I'm going to block you. Um, <laughs> fucking people. Uh, I'm going to flip-flop, guys. I'm going to flip-flop. You know why? You know why? Because data always changes. The markets always change. The macro always changes. Each of these individual companies change. I still have a lot of conviction in CleanSpark. But just as I said earlier, not your mom. If you were paying attention, it's pretty clear in here that we're in a danger zone on clean spark one that could be problematic right this chart doesn't look great it's almost a triple top or a double top at the very least 
It's under the golden retracement zone where things like to retrace and it doesn't really have support until $11. So that's why I fucking flip-flopped. Anyway, moving on. And again, same thing with MicroStrategy. You have, when you have something that's operating at like a 95% premium, you're taking a risk, right? If Bitcoin deteriorates, let's go back. I don't actually think if I pulled this up, I need to show you Bitcoin. I don't actually know, or I didn't focus on it enough, evidently, because I got people asking these stupid fucking questions. So, all right, here, this is a big deal. This is a big deal right here. We need to find support right here. If we find support right here, it's more like in a sending triangle, you know, pennant pattern. It's not a big deal, right? If we find support here, let's say tomorrow we break up, we're up in 67, we get like up to here. That's going to look good. It's going to look bullish. But if we don't and we start dropping down and we get down to this next layer down here and we still don't look strong, then we reach a danger zone. Because if we close a couple of days underneath this previous support line, we're, we're probably fucked. And then we're looking at 57K and potential. This retracement right here, the measured move for this kind of drop would put us around the, the 52, 53 range. This does not have to happen. But I took 28% of my money, still got $2 million roughly sitting inside of my invested account. And I decided to, since this is my livelihood and how I make money, I sold it. I sold it because I'm afraid of the potential of this. I'm also afraid of all the conflicting data that's happening across the economy. One day it's like, oh, we look super strong, guys. Everything looks good. Oh, but if you look at industrial and manufacturing, it looks like shit. Oh, and if you look at most of China's data, it looks like shit. Oh, and if you look at most of Europe, it looks like trash. And that's just across every... And But then it's like, oh, but this looks good. Oh, uh, but this doesn't. Oh, we're inflationary. Ah, uh, no, we're not. We're, it's going to go down. We're going to lower rates. It's changing every day. It looks crazy. It looks crazy. So I personally will sell out. And I'm also going to look through these comments and anybody who talks shit is fucking gone. And I will find you on X too. Kiss my ass. Anyway, moving on. Let's go down here. Uh, Ron. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's get it. Joe Woodward. Welcome to the dark side. Yes, sir. I like my Mac, man. So far, I got to admit it. Outside of some of the visual stuff here, it's, it's pretty cool. Audio is starting to fizzle at 259. Hopefully that's not true. Hey, have you guys seen any issues with the audio? Let me know. Uh, AAP, please, as recommended by your buddy, Derek. Derek is the shit. Let's look at it. Lussie Picker. Let's still love that name. All right. Let's see how he's doing. Is Eric still making a, or Derek still making a bunch of money? Uh, nope, that ain't it. That's Apple. No, oh, picked the wrong one. One sec. Let me go back. Apple still looks like shit. I'm just going to throw that out there. Not be a big fan. I remember like a year ago, the narrative, everybody's like, what? You're talking shit about Apple? Apple's the greatest company in the world. Now it seems like everybody's just like, eh, I don't know about Apple, man. <laughs> that China exposure. Oh, yeah. Tell me about it. Hmm. All right. AAP. Yeah, he's still been doing good. We got a retracement here off this fib, but what a runner. Um, he did great on uranium too. Derek is a smart guy. If you guys aren't following him, like Rex, Derek, all these guys are really brilliant. You should be watching them if you're not watching me. Um, 76% increase. That's great. Uh, honestly, it could run a little bit more too. Let me go to the monthly here. Uh, I should look to, well, I mean, you're kind of hitting resistance, right? You're hitting resistance, at least visually off of these previous support zones um, not a ton of volume there to worry about though, but visually it's there. Uh, I would, I don't know. I don't know how far Derek thinks this is going to run. He'd probably be better to talk to about some of that, but like the golden retracement zone, the 200 moving average, I don't know what he's, what he's in like leaps or whatever, and how much the, the return is. I really don't care about, um, auto parts stores. Uh, and so I don't have a lot of like long-term faith in them. But um, 
this could go higher. And if anything, I mean, look at the the monthly. It's just getting started on the RSI and the weekly. Let's see here. The weekly we did touch up at peak levels, so that's arguably a little overextended. Maybe we trend under this fib for a while before going higher. Um, or or on the daily we end up finding support. Sometimes on the on oversold conditions, you'll find a support around seventy. What does this thing look like for financials? I don't even know if I know how they're Q ported. Let me check. Do, do, do. I am a bear today. I'm not a bear. I shouldn't say I'm a bear. It could go either way. Uh, who said that anyway? Yidram. 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 Hopefully I'm saying that right, man. Sorry. Um, I'm kind of a bear, right? Like I'm worried about everything that I showed earlier in here. Let me go back. I'm worried about the S&P that's climbed a bunch. It's climbed halfway to what my targets were, guys. I was bullish as fuck down here, right? Now we're halfway to what my year in target is for the S&P. What month is it? Did it just turn into April? So my my 9 month out target, we're already halfway there. The Nasdaq is stopping at the golden retracement zone and finding resistance. The Russell hopefully finds support here on this fib. But Again, just looking at these markets, they scream. And when you look at the, again, I don't know how many times I got to say the same thing, but when you look back over here in January of 2018, January of 2018, we've got bearish divergence on the monthly ever since then, and we just got near it. So it wants to roll over. It doesn't want to go higher here from a technical level. And then when we look at this on the weekly, it's the third highest level since 2017 and really going back to, I don't know, the nineties or some shit. Like it's a, it's a long time, right? So the, these levels are incredibly overextended from a technical standpoint and they want to cool off. If you guys don't understand technicals, I got a feeling you're going to learn about them. And yes, 28% of my portfolio is cash, maybe 27 now, because I did do some buying today, but and, and I'm worried about these drops, but it could go the other way. I could be wrong and I'm okay with that. You don't have to be 100% in all the time. You could sometimes weigh the markets and just figure out like, hey, I don't want to be full risk on because if I have 28% cash, I can buy the fuck dip. If I got zero cash, I can't. And when the markets do well, you thank the gods for it. Watch Rex's video too. He talked, he's the same view as me. It could go either way, right? But I think it's healthier for it to retrace now. And I want the market to be healthy. I don't want it to go parabolic, melt up, and then melt down, and then everybody's fucked. I don't want that kind of economy. I would much rather see it take a while and and stew for a little bit. At least, at least some of the market. The, the ones that haven't performed yet, rotate into that. That's great. You know, pass the wealth on. But we can't just see NVIDIA and these others go straight up every day. And then and then and then have these have these technicals maintained. They just won't. All right. So advanced auto parts. So the thing I don't love here, and maybe it's the estimates that he likes. So seeing some increases. Um, EPS is going up positive again. So that's good because it was. I mean, the last couple of quarters don't look great on this. Um, they're buying back shares. I don't hate that. Still got cash flow. Cash flow is pretty decent. What was their net before? Like not huge net income. What is the $5 billion market cap? Uh, I don't know. I don't love this one. I do love that Derek's making a bunch of money off of it. And I hope other people do too. Um, and there's this huge ass gap. I mean, that's a big fucking gap. That is a big gap. Um, let's just look at it here. <laughs> That's a big gap, but here's the thing. It doesn't have to fill right now. It doesn't have to, it could take a long ass time. I think what, I think what Derek loves most about this is this absolute void in price action. So what he's hoping is that we stay above this volume shelf here because I don't really see it from the fundamental standpoint. I mean, I don't see it. It's $5 billion company. They didn't even make any money the last two quarters. They lost money. 
right? Like I don't, I don't see it from that level. Maybe he can explain that more, but I do see it from a technical level because if we could find support above this volume profile, then from a technical level, it, it wouldn't take much to whipsaw over there. And let me just go to the full time frame. Maybe there's more volume. Ah, there we go. That's a little better. So there's a little more, there's a little more friction there. But over the over the last couple of years, there's like none. Going back to 2017, there's like no volume in that range. So let, let's see, maybe this range. But so maybe he's seeing it from there. Maybe he's thinking about the gap. I don't know, but I don't I don't love the chart. Anyway, moving on. Uh sold on my MSTR and Cypher yesterday before market closed. Good job. Matt Nintendo. So you're still doing pretty good. Missed this huge red day except for Tesla and PayPal. Did you buy any more? Probably would have been a good day to buy a little bit if you already got a jump ahead of that. Again, I think it could be a little lower though. So maybe you're right. Maybe wait. Uh, I'm surprised you sold most of your CLS. Okay, I already responded to that one. Did you downsize? I did. I downsized CLSK by 40%. Expectations for Q1 earnings for Tesla. I don't know what to expect, Penny. Um, they could be good. They could be horrible. It's hard to know. Deliveries were horrible. I don't even think they're concerned about earnings, which is interesting. Um, let me see. F. Function F? F? Function F? Shift F? Sorry, I'm trying to learn how this stuff works. <laughs> I don't know how to get... Does anybody know how to downsize your window? Uh... I don't have like a, let me see something. Function F. There we go. Got to use the Mac. I'm going to have to get a Mac keyboard. I'm using a PC keyboard. This is insane. Anyway, but yeah, so I don't know what's going to happen for Tesla for earnings. I hope it goes down more. I hope it goes down more. Because I want to buy more. <laughs> so the lower, the better. I, I'd love to, and also from a technical level, I would love to fill that gap. And Tesla, I would love to fill the gap in like the 140s just to get it out of the way. All right, let's see. Uh, we got absolutely clipped today, boys. Eh, a little bit. It bounced back, though. This is a great channel. I agree with you back. Back back to Bethla again. Celsius covered calls at local tops. Yeah, you can do that. That's one strategy. Definitely works for a number of people. Not really my thing. Cypher, I already did, Fernando. DCA to my main portfolio. This is just play money. Cool. All right. Enigma, thanks for providing this insight. Eventually, would you would like to ditch the job? So it's nice to hear the thought process from you. Oh, yeah. No problem, man. Happy to. My bastard child, Tanner, harassing me on social media. I'm going to have to make sure I jump into his YouTube here soon. Diapers are expensive. I don't know where that comment came from, but they are right here. Uh, do you think it would stop at 15? All right, so I already talked about Clean Spark AMD. Let's do Clean AMD. Uh, AMD has retraced a lot, didn't it? See, I just don't know from a I just don't know if AMD's got the chops, right? Does it have what it takes? Because it's all about Nvidia right now. Let's see what AMD's guidance looks like. That's going to be more important because this already ran, right? It already ran. All the all the chip stocks, they've run. AI stuff, it ran. Now we need fundamentals to drive it. So let's look at what we got here. So it's still kind of flat for revenues. EPS is going up, though. That's good. Looks like they're guiding for higher. I don't know if anybody knows. Like, Once you go Mac, you don't go back. Well, I'm done. Okay. We'll see. We'll see, man. Um, I don't know. I don't know if AMD is good in the future. Look at the cash flow, just quarter over quarter diminishing. Their net income's picking up again. That's good. 667 million. And it looks like they're guiding for a little bit higher. So maybe they get a bill in there. But they're a $288 billion company running at a PE ratio of 341. I mean, if anything, I would potentially be looking at a short opportunity. I'm actually going to add a note real quick here. Just in case China fucks us. Um, might be interesting. Like 
Like if we, cause in the Philippines, I don't know how much you guys are paying attention, but in the Philippines, in other parts of Asia, we're looking at, uh, just escalating tensions and the potential of war. And we have a pact with the Philippines. So if they have somebody who is killed by China and they're, man, we're getting close, uh, then they could, could theoretically call in the United States to help defend them. And if we start moving ships into the South China Sea around the Philippines, tensions are going to go up. So maybe AMD is a decent short. Um, if Because if that happens, I mean, we're losing ships for a while. And that gets ugly. Because 90% of the world's chips are made in Taiwan, guys. The advanced ones. The ones that matter. Kind of a big fucking deal. If you ask me. Kind of a big deal. But yeah, I for a long man, I don't love AMD. I mean, if you would have asked me like at the pandemic, before it went up like, I don't know, 310%, maybe, maybe better. Oh, that's just 2022. <laughs> Where was this in the pandemic? I guess, no, you know what? Chips were probably doing all right in the pandemic. They were. They, they got a solid bounce because we had a chip shortage. So that makes sense. Yeah, Taiwan Semi makes everybody's semiconductor makes everybody's chips pretty much. I mean, a lot of them, right? They make Nvidia chips. They make they make uh, AMD chips. They make they're, they're the boundary for the world. So that's why people don't realize this. But if China wants to go to war, we're going to war. We're going to war, guys. Like it's it's happening. It's happening because we we can't have them take Taiwan. If they want to take Taiwan, they've said it's the red line. We can't have them do that because it's our red line. So you guys remember this. When you're in, in these chips, you remember this. Oh, can you guys still see me? My feed looks like it froze. If you guys can still see and hear me, let me know and I'll keep going. Uh, froze. Did, did my audio freeze? Oh, you can hear me. Well, that's fucking weird. Let's do this. Re-add me. Can I come back to the stage? No. Huh. What about, uh, so fuck the visual. I can always drop off, but can you guys see this moving? Can you see the screen moving? If you can see the screen moving, I'll keep going. You just won't get to see my pretty face. It's all black. You can see that. Okay, good, good. That's the part. Well, you, well, you lost me, guys. Sad. I know. All right. Um, it still says I'm going. No, it's not my cam.
ASMR stream go. <laughs> Let me see if I can present here again. I don't know what the fuck happened. This bums me out. Bums me out. Super bummed out. Uh... You can still hear me. Motherfucker. Can you hear that? Back to PC we go. No shit. God, I just spent $4,000 on this motherfucker. Can you see my screen moving? Okay. All right, cool. And you got audio? All right. We'll stick with that for now. We'll stick with that for now. Let me go back up and see where I can. Cue. 